Hi guys, Brenda here. Um, I'm <laughs> I'm here. I think I had about 15 little mini heart attacks. My teenager's driving me around. Um, whew, let me tell you what. <laughs> He's not a bad driver, but I just don't do this part very well. So, but he needs to practice and um I am he I'm having him drive. We had to go to the bank because he um, got his first paycheck from his new job that he got. And so he's cashing his check. That's always exciting. And I'm having him drive me to Michael's because Michael's has a sell on their photo boxes, which I like to put my seed packets in. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that when we get back from our little trip. And, um showing you kind of how to get your stuff organized now for upcoming, you know, seed starting and garden season and why you should seed start. Um, it's just too expensive to go buy a couple of plants at your big box stores. Sorry, I still got my cough. <clears throat> So, and it's really not hard. A lot of people get really intimidated about starting seeds. A seed has everything it needs to grow. And um, one of my favorite things I used to do with my first graders was we would do seeds in a jar. And we would use wet paper towels to show them what the seeds look like as they germinate. So, the main thing is once your seeds germinate, they have everything they need to do all that. Um, is having good soil. For them to continue to grow and then they need you know warmth and light and of course water and um, and it's a process figuring what that is and you know how to do that but you can do it pretty affordably um, and I'm hoping to get to show you how to do that and take some of the intimidation out um, the worst thing that happens is you fail but they won't all fail and so um, and I think that's what people don't realize. And so, so anyway, so that's what we're doing. And then we have to hit Walmart because my dog ate his non-slip restaurant shoes when he came home last night. He slipped them off at the door, forgot to put them downstairs. Well, they smell like grease. And, um, yeah, while I was in the shower, Odie and Lucy ate the top off of one of his shoes. So I have to go buy him some new shoes. And hoping we can find his size. He wears, he's got some big feet. So um, that's what we're doing this morning. And um, hopefully I'll survive the car ride. Ooh, not for the faint of heart, let me tell you. Welcome to my kitchen. My name is Brandy. Um, if you're new here, um, and I want to welcome you to my channel, Sewing Back. And um, at the beginning of this clip or of this video, um, I was on a field trip with my teenage driver who was driving me around, and he took me to my local Michaels because this week in my area. Michael's had photo boxes. Let me show you. These were on sale. So these are normally about 40 plus ish dollars. I know they also sell them. I think I've seen them for sale on Amazon, but I think they were pretty high. And, um, but they, they carry them at Michael's. And they have clear ones, they have these kind of blue color ones, and they have multiple color ones. And um, these are actually for storing printed photographs. Or if you do film and have negatives or something like that. They are archival safe, and so that's typically what these are for. But if you've ever been on YouTube, on a gardening, anything, you will have seen these because pretty much every gardener uses these to put their seed packs in. So I ran over, well, I didn't do it, 
my son ran me over to my local Michaels so I could get two more of these because they were on sale for $14.99 because what happened to me last year with my boxes were um, I didn't have okay so I didn't have like enough boxes for what I was planting and what I originally thought was with one box it was going to be for uh, vegetables and um, and fruit and when I say fruit I mean like tomatoes green beans those are technically fruits um, <clears throat> and that my colorful box was going to be for flowers and I think maybe herbs and so um, and what I found is if like if you see this one I put hollyhocks and snapdragons and so I ended up sharing boxes with everything and I didn't have anywhere near enough for my vegetable fruit um, gardening seed packs and so then what ended up happening is I would take some out I'd plant and I have a big bowl downstairs and I would just put all of these half used sometimes all the way used um, packs in in my bowl and um, and then sometimes I would have bigger packs that don't necessarily fit in these that I get from the feed and seed like these zipper peas um, usually I would take these out of here and put them in um, like a mason jar with a lid and to for storage for longer term storage um, but as gardening season went on this became very disorganized I didn't want to throw like my empty packets away um, like I grew the Israeli melon this was the first melon I grew successful it's very similar to um, a cantaloupe um, they were really tasty but um, they spoil very quickly so you have to kind of be mindful like they produce like crazy but we it's like we couldn't eat them fast enough before they went bad so my chickens actually got a lot of these we did get some and i was able to share some but my chickens got a lot of those um and this like my sugar pie pumpkin this was the first pumpkin i grew successfully i've been trying for years to grow a, a pumpkin successfully and every one I've tried to grow, I've been overrun with squash bugs and, and I just haven't had the success and I had success with these. And I actually have these that I processed, put up and they're in my freezer and I use them to make muffins and um, oatmeal bakes and things like that. So I, this is empty but I held on to the pack because I need to go back through and make notes of the things I planted last year you know what did I like what did I not like because we planted a lot of different varieties of different things and you know which ones grew well which ones didn't which one maybe had some more issue with like um, blight or powdery mildew or, or what have you or maybe just some of the varieties of tomatoes and you just didn't think they had a lot of flavor so um i held on to these so that i could go back through and kind of do my recap and make my notes and um so i knew i had all this i wanted to get it organized i really wanted to already be working on this but i got ill and i'm a little behind but i'm not that far behind and it's going to be okay so i went over like i said to the michaels i got two more of these boxes so that i can kind of revamp this whole thing get it a little bit better organized so that i can go through my open seed packs or empty seed packs and i can take my handy dandy legal pad and i can make my end of year notes so that I can plan for this coming year and you know as to what's working um, what what didn't work um, and what's maybe something new I want to try so um, I want to encourage you that if you are thinking about having a garden or you've already gardened before 
um, whether it be on a very small scale, if it's uh, in, uh, only in containers, or if you are thinking about going a little more grandiose. Um, I guess about 18 months ago, I started taking some college classes at my co local community college for horticulture science. And um, the first class I took was just a basic horticulture science class that was pretty informative, was very helpful. And a, a lot of it I knew um, because when you teach first grade science, um, you learn a lot of the basics. So, but there were other things that I did learn that I didn't necessarily know. And so I'm really glad I took it. I wanted to show you my master copy of my front garden that we built back in 2021. And what I did was I, it's, I drew it and um, I left everything blank. This is just my master copy. This is where the beds are and how it looks and where you come in. Um, I have rose bushes and things that are marked on here. I have planters outside because when we designed this garden, we designed it to have planters and also a, um, on this side we have our muscadine vines. And this was all done um, to keep the deer out. I do have a fence, but it's a shorter fence. And so essentially this is like the two fence approach. And I planted things like lantana, um, rosemary, lavender, um, all those kinds of things, and the deer hate them. They absolutely hate them and they have never gotten into this garden even though the fence is five foot tall and um so this has worked beautifully and it's pretty it because in all these lantana and flowers and uh brown-eyed susans and all the things and how I, and butterfly bush it just attracts so many pollinators and so so this is my master garden plan for my front garden now I have overlays and I have copies of this from last year and what I planted where. Because even if you have, um, if you're gardening in containers or um, in um, raised beds, you still want to practice some crop rotation, um, moving things around. But you have to be aware, like in this gardening, as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm developing where I have more and more perennials in this garden. This may eventually become totally a perennial garden for me. Um, but you have to know, you know, if you can companion plant that with X, Y, or Z. So having your master copy that you can just photocopy year after year, and you can plan out each garden season, what you want to put in there, or if you don't want to put anything in there, or if you have a perennial that stays in there, or what have you. And so I totally recommend that you draw that out. Now, you may look at this and you may say, that's a massive garden, I don't have that. Well, to be very honest with you, where I live, I have lived for 26 years, and we built this garden in 2021, the spring of 2021. And I did have a raised bed garden prior to this, but it was nowhere near to this size. Um, and so when I first started gardening, when we first moved here, um, because before we lived here, we had a rental. We gardened in our rental. Um, when we always had some kind of garden. When we came here, our biggest issue we had was sunlight. And so sunlight was a big issue. And um, the only time we really could garden was in the summer and in our front yard, our very front yard. And we always had struggles and issues with deer um, and them eating our harvest. And so I got, and then the weeds. And I got really frustrated and um, very overwhelmed that I just couldn't manage it. And so I kind of was ready to give up gardening. 
And then about 12 years ago, my neighbor, um, next, my next door neighbor at the time, had discovered a new way of gardening um, called square foot gardening. And he let me borrow his book and I devoured it. <laughs> and I was fascinated at the premise that you could grow a lot of food in a very small space. Now, am I telling you that you can grow a year's worth of food in a five by five bed? No, that's ridiculous. But you can actually grow a lot to supplement your family um, in, in a, small, a relatively small space if you plan it correctly. And so in the description, I will leave a link to their, they have a website, Square Foot Gardening, and pretty much any information you wanna know would be there. I can also link the book. Um, it's a great resource to have on your shelf. Um, they even have tools you can get that, that you can put down when you're planting that has the different things and how far apart, you know, a bean would get planted versus a cabbage or whatnot. But that really helped me fall back in love with gardening. And when I started, I literally had torn out by my front stairs a flower bed that I had. And that became my new uh, garden. And I gardened it every summer. And we had wonderful tomatoes and cucumbers and peppers and, and beans. And, and I did this in a little five by five garden bed right next to my front porch. And because it was so close to my house, really didn't have a lot of struggles with the deer and stuff like that. I was able to manage to keep all that safe. And I absolutely loved it. And so I did that for several years. And around that time, my son started at our local university. He was a microbiology major and he focused a lot in food science and did a lot of experiments with food science at his college. And um, they actually have a working farm and he actually worked on the farm, did work with bees and different things with trees and stuff like that. And so he knew that I had this passion and he came home and, and, and that summer he built me six more raised beds. They were all in my front yard. We fenced them in. And this is pretty much what I gardened in for about 10 years. I was still pretty much, I would try cool weather crops and stuff like that. Typically by the spring in Georgia, everything's going to bolt. And I tried many times in the fall to get things to grow, but it didn't necessarily work because I would run out of, the, of daylight because our house would be shadowed um, just with our sun patterns and everything else was heavily treed. And then we had 2020 happen and we um, were offered the land we had there was a little over half an acre behind us and on this and about uh, for, uh, mm -hmm. over half an acre on the side of us so um and we were offered both pieces of property at a relatively inexpensive price um, they're not buildable they were full of sweet gum trees that were that were sick and um, needed to come down. So even though we were getting a great deal on the price of the land and uh, the closing and all that kind of stuff, there was a huge investment to, we had to remove the trees. And, um, but we, we weighed all the cost and we felt like it was still going to be a good investment for us. Um, because we were going to take that land and, and put it into our current land and home so we have a larger acreage um, with our, our home where we dwell. So that's what we did. And when we removed those trees, we all of a sudden had all the light we could ever want. And we always knew we had a purpose that we would replant trees. Trees are very important. Um, but I wanted trees with a purpose. The trees that had been there were pre-Civil War and they had lived their lifespan. And um, I wanted to plant trees with a purpose that could feed us or people who would come after us, um, that that would be a blessing or that they could feed wildlife um, or all the above. And so that's kind of what we have been doing. And it also allowed us to be able to grow our gardens because that was what John and I both wanted. We both had grandparents who were gardeners, farmers, 
and um, it's just something that we love to do and the older that we have gotten the more we're drawn to that and so that's what we do so yes this is a pretty good size garden and I have the other one that we built last year in the backyard and we're going to expand on that this in this coming spring and um, we're excited about that it gives us more opportunities and um, because at some point I think it would be really neat if I could have some kind of a small market share um, garden or I don't even know if it could possibly at some point be a ministry um, maybe for people in need I just don't know I don't know what doors God is going to open and close in that but I just know this is what I'm supposed to be doing and so that is what I am working towards so this is nothing too too fancy and I can insert like I'll take a photograph of it so that you can see it um, I just drew it out I used um, I did use some of the tools from taking the landscape design class um, but basically you need a good pencil with a good eraser this is cardstock and um, I used um, I guess it's like a drafting ruler kind of thing um, I like it better than just your traditional ruler with that I hope that you found value in this if you did I would appreciate a thumbs up if you are liking our content please consider subscribing to our channel if you know someone you think who might enjoy our channel, please share our channel. We would appreciate that. It helps us grow our platform. You can also find us, we do have a Facebook sewing back page. Um, and typically it has our videos are put there. Sometimes we have other things, local things. Um, little helpful hints sometimes get put there. We're also on Instagram sewing back. And um, with that, I thank you. I thank you for watching. I hope that you have a blessed day, and I will see you next time. Bye. So, if you garden long enough, you will eventually, you're going to want more garden space. And there's nothing wrong with that. Just, you have to realize that um, it's a lot of work. And you don't want to overplant a space if you're not going to be able to maintain it throughout the whole growing season and not, only, not just maintain it are you going to be able to use what you get are you going to be okay if you plant and you've spent this money and investment and it's a bust because there are years where it's just a bust um, that's just part of gardening um, <clears throat> so those are things to take into account and that's why I would recommend if you're starting out it's better to start small start with a bed start with um, a green stalk or two or something similar to that and start um, trying to have success with that and if you have success with that then you kind of go out from there now you may uh, want to start with flowers you know flowers a lot of times are easy you can do those in planters in beds by your house well a lot of times you can interplant um, in those same beds um, to a tomato plant or a, cu a cucumber plant that maybe you grow vertically um, there's a lot of things like that that you can do and so but either way you still want to have something drawn out so that you can keep a record of your space and like I said what you planted and and then kind of do the recap of this worked this didn't work and then the following season you will know okay <clears throat> well I planted um, sugar snap peas on the trellis on this trellis I planted um, cucumbers on this trellis so this year I want to move that around I think I want this to be uh, a, a green bean trellis 